Welcome to week two of Thy Kingdom Come. We started the study by looking at what Jesus meant when he talked about the kingdom of God and how we can participate in and experience the kingdom. Throughout the Gospels, Jesus used stories, metaphors, and illustrations to help us understand the central characteristics of the kingdom of God. There are three central characteristics that define the kingdom. It's a kingdom of humility, unity, and grace. In our world, we believe power leads to greatness, but in the kingdom, Jesus says, the greatest are those with humility. In our world, we're surrounded by division and fighting. In the kingdom, there's unity and harmony. In our world, you get what you deserve, for better, for worse. In the kingdom, grace is given freely. One day the disciples asked Jesus an important question about the kingdom of God. They asked, who is the greatest? What they really wanted to know is, how can I be the greatest? How can I get promoted? How can I be first in the class? How can I win the trophy? There's a debate in every sport about the GOAT, the greatest of all time. Is it Michael Jordan or LeBron James? Is it Ronaldo or Messi? Is it Tom, pra Tom Brady or is Patrick Mahomes gonna take the throne? and we use stats and championships to debate who truly is the greatest. When the disciples asked Jesus, who's the greatest in the kingdom of God, he didn't give a set of skills to master or accomplishments to achieve. He called over a little child, he pointed to him and said, I tell you the truth, unless you turn from your sins and become like little children, you will never get into the kingdom of heaven. So anyone who becomes as humble as this little child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. In the kingdom of God, greatness is not measured in power or achievements or talent, but in humility. The Israelite people had been waiting for the kingdom of God for a long time. They were expecting a king to come and establish this physical kingdom. They would be a powerful nation again. What surprised the people about Jesus' announcement was not what the kingdom is or, or that it is here, but who would establish it and how he would do so. Most rulers got to, got to power by asserting their strength. They stayed in power through force and fear. Unlike any other kingdom this world has ever seen, Jesus' kingdom is built on love and advanced with compassion. Instead of a throne, it starts with a manger, it ends with a cross. The king reigns, but as a servant, he gets down and washes the feet of his followers. Jesus' opening words of his ministry were an announcement that the kingdom of God is here. And his second words right after that were the invitation, come, follow me. Seeking the kingdom means seeking to be like Jesus, and Jesus lived with humility. His unique and somewhat confusing claim is that in the kingdom, humility will actually make you great. The first beatitude from Jesus' Sermon on the Mount says, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And the message translates this verse in a really beautiful way. It says, you're blessed when you're at the end of your rope. With less of you, there is more of God and his rule. This is how humility makes us great in the kingdom of God. With less of us, there could be more of God and his rule. Less of our way, more of God's way. Less of our plans, more of God's plans. Less of our own effort and more of relying on God. Jesus says we need to become like little children because little children are completely dependent on their parents. When my son is getting older and can do a lot, but he still can't get very far without me. Um, he can't reach the top dresser drawer. I have to lift him up. He has no money. I buy all his food and clothes. His Knowledge of the world is limited, so he relies on me to answer every, what is this, and why, why, why? He doesn't always know how the things work or, or what's going on around him, but he doesn't worry about it because he trusts that I'm taking care of him and keeping him safe. Now someday he'll be taller than me, he'll make his own money, he'll probably be smarter than me the way things are currently going, and he may not be as dependent on me but I hope he never forgets that we're all dependent on another parent and we never outgrow or outlearn or outearn that dependence on God. Humility makes us great because God's way is better than our way. The disciples wanted to know what they could do to be great, but they were thinking in worldly terms instead of kingdom terms. 
Greatness is not measured by our success, but by our service. Not by building ourselves up, but by building others up. Not by gaining, but by giving away. Jesus completely flipped our understanding of greatness and success and tells us we'll actually be blessed if we live this way. So now you'll head back to your groups to discuss more about what humility looks like, how we can grow in humility. So share with each other, learn from each other, and I hope you all have a great conversation. Mm -hmm.